Thank you for that prayer. Um, this morning, once again, <clears throat> brothers and sisters, we are honored to have um, Dr. Clifford Money um, speaking to us. Um, I've been introducing him in bits and pieces throughout the week. And uh, this morning's bit um, is to, <clears throat> to introduce um, Dr. Mani, the father and the husband. He is married to the former Bridget McKenzie. He is the proud father of four children, Miranda, Clifford Jr., Melissa, and Christian. In his quiet moments, um, he and his wife team up and indulge in one of their favorite pastimes, which is writing. And together they have authored a devotional book. It's entitled Our Daily Boost. Formerly it was known as Words to Grow By. Um, Dr. Mani is always conscious of God's grace and God's goodness towards him in lifting him from the gutter of this life and setting him on the road to glory. He is committed to God's service and believes in giving his best to his Redeemer, as we have seen um, since we started on Sunday. So Dr. Mani, once again, we are looking forward to hearing what the Lord has put on your heart. Over to you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a blessing being with you all through this week. Uh, it's hard to believe that uh, today for Massa is Wednesday and for you is Thursday. And but we're moving right on. Last night, um, I forget to mention uh, that I have, in addition to the Staten Island Seventh day Adventist Church, I also have a mission and it's called the Triumphant Tabernacle Mission of Seventh day Adventists. And they are, the members from there have always has been supporting every night. You don't just wanted to shout out to them tonight. So we shout out to Staten Island or uh, last night. Amen. Now I'll go to the word very quickly. Uh, before we go to me, pray, Father in heaven, we thank you so much, dear Lord, for your blessings. Uh, once again, do your thing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In the book of uh in the book of um Psalm. The 100 of Psalm, he said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands, serve the Lord with gladness, come before him, come before his presence with singing. And then in the New Testament, Philippians 4.4 4 said, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. And verse 6 said, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, Make a supplication with thanksgiving. Let your uh, request be made known unto God. Tonight, our subject for consideration tonight is glued by gratitude. Glued, uh, let me see here. All right. Glued together. By gratitude, I want to get it correctly. Glued together by gratitude. Everything that I have talked about throughout this week, today is a fifth sermon. Everything that we have been talking about, they all become meaningless if you do not include this one ingredient. Glued, glued together by gratitude. Gratitude is a key. That, glued, that glues everything together, all that we have spoken about. In night one, we talk about the intention of creation. We, we clearly saw where God, why God created us. And then we, we went down to the fact that we were included in all the work God possessed. We are part of it. And when he called his son, Jesus Christ being his son, we were adapted to be his children. So whatever Christ is entitled to, we learn that we too are entitled to it. And then uh, the third night, we talk about perceiving to possess. You cannot possess. You will not have it until you are able to see it or visualize it in your mind. And then last night, out of focus, we talk about the fact that the enemy has uh, uh, thrown us out of focus so that we think less about ourselves. But last night, the Lord showed to us that we can come back 
to focus. We can reset our focus so that we will do the great thing that God had made us to do tonight. We are saying the only thing that will help us to do all of the above is that one word called gratitude. Gratitude is known as being seen to be the, the highest or the most elevated emotion of mankind. Now, gratitude is not only being elevated in the Bible, but also in the science. I don't know if, you're, if your IT person can just put that, share the screen for me here. A quotation, I want to read this quotation because I think this quotation is very important. Uh, if you can't share it, I will just read it. Uh, later on, maybe you can put it into the, uh, into the, uh, into the chat. Here is what it said. The quotation said, within four days, not five days, not 10 days, but within four days by thinking about the life that you desire with the elevated emotion of gratitude and joy, as if your prayer has already been answered, your immune system increases by 50%. Your immune system increases, thank you so much. Your immune system increases by 60%. You can turn on genes that signal the body to start reducing tumors. You create stem cells that regenerate and repair new healthy tissue. It activates, now listen to this, it activates the thermos and produces antibodies that kill viruses that the one we are struggling with that kill viruses, bacteria, and even cancer cell. This is by Joe Dispenza. This is scientifically been proven that gratitude will do a whole lot. Thank you for sharing. Gratitude will do a whole lot. So everything that I have told you, unless we bring these together with gratitude, gratitude is the only thing that can allow us to, uh, uh, while hope takes us to the future and allow us to see into the future, our, our life that we're going to live in the future, our imagination takes us there and make us to see it. But the only thing that is powerful enough to pull it from there into our orbit is gratitude. Gratitude is the one thing. Gratitude is like salt. I don't care how much seasoning you put in your meal, in your soup or wherever you are cooking. You put all the seasoning, the onion, the garlic, the, 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 the parsley, all of those seasoning, they are good. But without the salt, those seasoning will do, uh, the food will not taste any better unless you put the salt. The salt does something because the salt activates all of the flavor from all the different seasoning that you put into the meal. The salt is the only thing that brings all that flavor to make it good. The same way, gratitude is a singular thing that will allow us to grasp things that we wish for and we see it in the future, but we see it as we see it, we begin to celebrate it here as if we already have it. Celebrating it means that we have to start thanking God for it. We, in the cage, we have been told, we have been retrained to believing that when we pray for something to God, whenever we pray, we will have to wait until the answer appear in our orbit or in our in our in real life for us. And then after the answer has appeared, then we thank God. Quite co the contrary to the economy of God. In God's economy, however, when you ask for it, that means you have seen it, then you begin to thank God for it, as if to say you already have it here. The same thing, if you ask for healing, we told you, you thank God for the healing, as if you have already received the healing. Even though your body is ravaged with pain, at the moment you are thanking God for total healing. You don't wait until that happened before you thank the Lord. That's the other way around. So gratitude is our singular elevator emotions that will make everything that we have talked about to come into play. Without it, all those things you can do, you can see into the future, it will only be a figment of your imagination. 
And we do that all the time. We, we dream about big stuff, but the stuff never come to fruition. You know why? Because we are not intentional and deliberate in pulling it from where it is to bring it to where we are. The only thing that can pull it from where it is to bring it to where we are is gratitude. Gratitude is the only powerful emotion that can grab it and bring it become the moment you start thanking God for it, you have sent a command to God's creation, letting the creation know that Clifford Manning is, is not asking for something. He, he already claiming it. And though it's not there, but he is acting as if it is there. So we will make sure that everything he asked for, he got it. My Lord. And that's a different way of thinking. When you, and I want you, I, I keep pushing this because I want you to understand that that is true prayer. You see, Moses, Moses was able to ask God for something that no human being since sin entered into the world has ever asked for. Moses asked for something that no human being had ever asked for since Moses and even up to now. And that is Moses had the audacity to look to look and say, God, while he was standing in God's presence, he said, Lord, I want you to show me yourself. Show me your glory. Show me your face. I want to see you. Moses didn't even know what he was asking. But you see, what brought Moses to that level was the fact that Moses had had an experiential relationship with God over the years. You see, from the time they left, from, from the time God uh, and Moses have an encounter in the burning bush, and Moses went to Israel, I mean, Egypt to bring Israel out. Moses has seen phenomenal things that God has done through him, opening the Red Sea, gushing water out of a dry rock to, to, to quench the thirst of 600 or even a million people. Moses has seen all of this. Everything that he asked for, he already always seen it. So because of that, Moses' faith had been building up and building up and building up and building up. And Moses came to the point one day, he said, hey, God, listen, man, you and myself, we've been together for so long. I've been seeing, you've been seeing me, you know what I look like, but I don't know what you look like. Can you just show me yourself? At least so I know who I'm talking to. When I look at that, I say Moses can ask for such great things because Moses himself, why he asked for that, he didn't even know what he was asking for. Moses was asking for something that would have destroyed him. But because Moses has so much faith into believing that, God allowed him to see his backpack. You know, I've been around for a long time. God had brought me a long, long way. A long, long way that my God had brought me from where he took me to where I am now. I am so bold in not coming before the Lord. You see, I'm coming before the Lord every single day, asking God for an insane amount of fun, amount of idea, things that will bring fun into my life. Because I say, Lord, you took me from the gutter and you brought me where I am. I want to be able to go back to my homeland. I want to go there and help to alleviate poverty. Oh, to do that, we are talking about something in the 10 figure. 10 figure. Now, what a little a boy from a little village that nobody ever heard of standing to be so bold and asking for 10 figure from God and saying, I want you to entrust me with 10 figure. I'm going to go to my country. I'm going to do some great thing with it. Not only my country, but wherever there's poverty that you send me to, I want to do great thing. I'm asking, I'm asking. And listen, when I say asking, when I say asking, I'm, I've already seen it coming into my life and I'm thanking God for it, everything. I see all the long zeros uh, are added by that number and I'm thanking God for it because because I am foolish enough to believe that God is going to fulfill my asking. Now, in the book of in the book of John, uh, they'll go to they'll go to John. In the book of John, John chapter sixteen, verse twenty-four. In John chapter sixteen, verse twenty-four, he say, "Hetero, or up until now, talking to his disciples, you have not asked me anything." But then he went on to say, ask, and it shall be given to you that your joy may be full. And here is what John was saying, what Jesus was saying. Jesus said, in the original text, Jesus said, ask and envelop yourself 
envelop yourself in the answer to your prayer. In other words, ask and surround yourself with the answer that you deserve, the answer that you want, and it will be done unto you so that your joy may be full. It is important to God for us to be joyful. Psalm 35, Psalm 35 verse 27 says, God takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. In other words, because of the cage, we have been dumping down by lies about who we are. And because of this, Maya Monroe said that the richest part or place on planet Earth is a graveyard because a lot of a uh, lot of people die without unleashing the purpose of their existence on this earth. If only they understood, if only they realized and understood that the power in them was greater than anything else. If they knew that greater is he that is in them than he that is in the world, if they knew that the Jesus Christ, the one to whom nothing is impossible, dwells in them as as their God, they would have unleashed whatever God placed in them to do. But they are always timid. And I'm speaking to somebody, I know who I'm speaking to, whether in South Africa or wherever you are watching us from, I want to submit to you. You have to come bold before the Lord. And you cannot be bold if you do not realize that all that you need is within you. Jesus said in Luke 32, in Luke 12, 32, he said, it is the Father pleasure, it is the Father pleasure to give you his kingdom, to give you the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is where all creation takes place. That is a, that is a Silicon Valley of creation, the kingdom. And then in, in the same Luke chapter 17, verse 21 said, the kingdom of God is within you. Now listen to that. If that's the Silicon Valley of all creation and that is in you, whoo, that means that you are a masterpiece. You can create, but we have not been told such. And we can do that by allowing gratitude to take its rightful place. Gratitude. Is that powerful? With all that you have heard me said, until we actually, actually zoom gratitude into it, gratefulness, because that's why the psalmist said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Come before the Lord with singing. Don't come sadly, come boldly, come happily, rejoice. Always, I say in the law, again, I say rejoice. And then he said, do not be anxious for anything because anxiety was not part of our DNA when we were created. I've not given you the spirit of fear, but a love, power, and a sound mind, says the Lord. So we ought to come to God boldly. Come to him boldly because that's what God desires for us to do. Up to now, you have not asked me for anything. Ask and you will receive. The Hebrew, the Greek word for ask here is ahitio. And ahitio is, it means that I already know what I, I already know that what I'm asking for is mine. <laughs> That's it, ask. Jesus said, ask. Ask meaning you need to claim the thing knowing full well that what you are claiming is already yours. Not asking for it to be, it is already yours. And then it's, and uh, Lambino, which is to receive or to lay hold of what's already yours. Receive or lay hold of what is already yours. The moment you see, whatever it is, you see, whenever you have a preview of your future, whenever you have this imagination, the wild imagination, you know, long before I came to the United States, I came to America since uh, 1982, way back when I was uh, much, much younger, I came to America. But you see, way before I came to America, I was already in America. See, my imagination, 
The moment the, the, the idea of coming to America get into my mind, guess what? I was seeing America, I was seeing the street, although what I saw when I get here was a little different, but I walked the streets of the United States in my mind. I walked the streets of New York in my mind. I saw myself standing before thousands of people preaching the gospel in America long before that came to fruition. Are you following me? Oh, Lord, I wish a few people can just unmute to just talk back to the preacher here. Amen. Because, Amen. because I am telling you, when you can see it and thank God for it, every time I saw it, at the time, at the time this was happening, let me tell you something, I didn't have any means. I was homeless. I knew somehow that God is going to bring me. I saw myself there. I didn't know anything about God at the time, but I used to daydream walking the streets of America. I used to see this. I saw it. I saw myself going to school. My mother, my mother, my birth mother, she could not speak nor hear. She was what the people would refer to as deaf and dumb. So when I was coming up, I was always referred to as dumb because I came from a, a womb of a woman who is deaf and dumb. And I set up and I said, no matter what happened in this life, I will do whatever it takes to prove all these naysayers. You see, people can try to define you. It only will fit if you accept it. Your true definition comes from your creator. You are not here by accident. I didn't know all of this before, but for some reason, I just realized for some reason, something was pushing me and driving me to achieve for some reason. Even though for all practical purposes, it would be impossible for me to even go to school. I didn't start school until I was 14 years old in a classroom with little children who were five and six years old, and they used to refer to me as first grade grandpa, but that didn't bother me because I was determined to learn. You see, what I'm saying to you is, I saw it and I thank God for it. I saw it and I walk as if I already have it. I saw it and I spoke as if I already have it. I saw it and I behave as if I already have it. It's simple. We all can do it. Everybody on this Zoom, you can do it. God has given us that power to do so. Oh, just give me two more minutes here. God has given us much power from within. The power Zoom from within. And whenever we understand who and whose we are, when we understand the power with which we were endowed by God, when we understand this, nothing is impossible. Notice Jesus said, with God, nothing is impossible. But he didn't stop there. He said, there, then he said nothing is impossible to those who believe. That's Jesus talking. The good that you see me do, the thing that you see me do, you will do greater work than these, Jesus said. I know he would never say those things if it were not possible. It is very, very possible. We need to rethink the way we pray. We need to recalibrate our way of praying, recalibrate our way of dealing with God. A lot of times we go to God as if we are so afraid. And the reason for that is because we are guilty because of the evil that we believe we have done. We think that God is mad with us. Listen to this. The Bible in 1 Corinthians 13, it said that love, I think John said God is love, and they say love keeps no record of wrongdoing. Oh, I know some people will say, but pastor, what are you talking about? Here's what I'm saying. The wrongdoing, the record of the wrongdoing is not in the mind of God. The wrong, the record of the wrongdoing is in your mind. It's in my mind. And because of that wrongdoing, the record that we keep of all the wrong that we have done, we take ourselves and project our own image onto God and believe in that God will not forgive us. Because what I've done is so bad, I don't think God will ever forgive me. So it prevents us from coming to God and prevents us from opening up to God so that we become more logical people. We say it can't be done. It cannot be done. Oh, God will not let me go. It's not God. It's you. Paul said it in Colossians 1.21. You are enemy of God in your mind. 
not in God's mind, but in your mind. If you will just do that, God, and drop the guilt and come and prostrate yourself before God and say, Lord, forgive me. We'll talk about that tomorrow through the prodigal son. Forgive me. You will see how endless and why the love of God is. Gratitude, I say, is the most powerful, elevated emotion that can make all the things that you need in this world come to you. And I believe that if you do it, it will come. Very quickly, let me end with a story. A story is told about a bird, a small bird. And this bird was sick for so long, lose, lost all of his fellows. And the bird was in a desert area, sun is hot, no tree, no water, but the, the, the bird wanted to be healed. If it cannot be healed, to die. And nothing was happening. So one day, while the bird was there, he saw a dove flying over it. And then he, 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 he cried out to the dove. He said, hey, little dove, where are you going? He said, I'm going to heaven. He said, oh, please do me a favor. When you get to heaven, can you ask somebody that maybe God just yeah, asked, how long I'm going to stay in this condition before I get better, please, or before I die? The dog said, sure, the dog got to heaven and asked the first angel he saw and said, look, I brought this query to you from this bird. And uh, it want to know how long it's going to take before it died or before uh, it get well. And the angel said, well, tell the little bird it's going to take seven years before the problem is over. And the dog said, I can't take that kind of message to the little bird, it would break their heart. So the angel said, okay, in that case, when you get to the bird, tell the bird to repeat their verse every day. Thank God for everything. Thank God for everything. Thank God for everything. And so every day the bird get up, thank God for everything. When the sun is hot, thank God for everything. When, when, when no water to drink, thank God for everything. No food to eat, thank God for everything. The little bird just kept thanking God, thanking God. And seven days later, the dog is flying again and saw something that blew its mind. The dog saw that not only uh, a, a little tree with a shale grew in the desert where the bird were, but the, the dog also see there were food there. The dog also see a lot, little water and then saw that the bird had grown back out of his feather and was just going around. Thank God for everything. Thank God for everything. The, ball, the, 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 the dog got confused, got to heaven and said, wait a minute, you told me that they, they were going to take seven years. But just seven days ago in the past and the dog, it's all right. And the angel said, you, you see, the dog was supposed to take seven years to heal. But because he keep thanking God for everything, repeating the verse, thank God for everything, he gratitude, watch this now, his gratitude shrink the seven years in, into seven days. Gratitude is all. So I... I urge you, I urge you, you are more powerful. You can bring whatever it is you want, whether it's healing, whatever. Thank God. Paul said, in whatsoever condition I find myself, I've learned to be content in whatever stage I'm in. Contentment with gratitude is the key. Father in heaven, thank you so very much, dear Lord, for this reminder. May everyone under the sound of my voice on this, on this platform, wherever they are joining us from, Lord, there are about 304 people on here tonight. I pray, dear Lord, that each of them will have this main takeaway from this tonight is that gratitude is like the salt that brings the good out of everything. And that's why Jesus said, we are the salt of the earth. Bless us towards this end in our endeavor to be more like Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.